talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last, I think, probably two and a half, three weeks or so. And I have a pretty decent amount of stuff. Some stuff I'm not going to show that I bought for, like, the Blockbuster going out of business. I'm showing most of it, but some of them I don't really care to show. Um, the first one I got is Mike Judd's Beavis and Butthead Season 4. It's called Volume 4. So some people, like, if you know, a couple years from now might see this and be like, oh, is this, you know, or who aren't paying much attention to these, might be like, is this just one of the older ones? No, this is the new series. It just came back after, I think it was off the air for, I think, 15, 16 years. And I was glad it came back. You know, I saw a couple mixed reviews of people saying it's not the same. I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. I thought there were some really good episodes. I felt like it seemed pretty much exactly the same. Like, you know, it could have aired in 1998. I mean, the only thing really different about this is a couple newer references. But Beavis and Buttheads, they're, you know, the way they talk, everything, is pretty much the same. Mike Judge didn't change any of that, and I'm glad that he didn't. The only thing that's different about this is that the episodes actually have, you know, on the DVDs, on the Blu-rays, they actually have the stuff that Beavis and Butthead were watching. So if they're watching, like, Jersey Shore or some music videos, they actually, I don't know, I think the music videos are on this, but I know the Jersey Shore and, like, Teen Mom clips that they talk over are actually on this. The old DVDs didn't have the videos because of, you know, rights issues and things like that. But this is only $69 on Blu-ray. I would definitely recommend picking this up, especially if you like Beavis and Butthead. Check this out. I, I really like it. I hope that he does, I, as far as I know, he's doing another season of this. And, you know, if it does well, hopefully he just keeps doing this for at least another four years or so. You know, as long as he did the last series. You know, but like I said, this is definitely one to check out. The next one, this one I had heard a lot of people talk about this, that they liked, and it's called The Dead. And I don't know, I thought it was pretty good. I will say there's a couple of complaints from people saying that some of the acting from the lead is, isn't that great. And I will say, I think there's a lot of ADR work it sounded a lot of ADR like recorded later and that might have taken away from some of the performance because I know ADR can really kill stuff I hate when I ever have to do that also I don't know I, I, I feel like there are a couple parts though where I, I, I think he might just sort of talk kind of mono-ish and just like we gotta go that way and I think it might just be the way the guy talks but I, I won't, don't let that aspect of it that's, that's not he's not amazing kill the movie because it's a very different movie and they've never really done a movie like this except for like some of the um it kind of it reminds me of like you know zombie and some of those 80s kind of zombie films that they used to do in other countries and stuff it had that kind of feel to it but it's basically in africa an american i think he's technically a soldier but he does like mechanic work in africa and he's basically um he basically, the plane, they're evacuating Africa because there's some kind of an outbreak. And his plane goes down. He's one of the few that survives. He's basically out on his own. He ends up meeting a um, guy who lives in Africa. I think he's part of one of the tribes, but he's a soldier too. And um, basically they try and survive and they end up finding a car. And they're basically just trying to get the one guy back to his son and try and get the American out, find a plane, find a way for him to get out. I, I don't know. I thought this was pretty cool. I thought, you know, I guess with the complaints, it still was a pretty cool movie. The next one, and a lot of people liked this, a lot of people didn't. And I will say this, it's the Human Centipede 2, I will say that this is the totally uncut version. There's been a lot of people going, oh, a lot of those uncut scenes with the sandpaper, I'm not going to get into the details, and the barbed wire, oh, those are just myths. Well, they're there. And I will say that that they are very twisted. I mean, they're not super, super, super graphic, but it's very twisted. And if you've seen the version on on demand, which I think that's how most people saw it, this is that was way tamer than this. And I will say that this is definitely not a movie for a kid to watch, or you know, anyone really under seventeen. It really is a twisted movie, and I don't say that about too much. This is a very twisted movie, but it's basically um, the character Martin, who he's basically obsessed with the Human Centipede film. And he really wants to, and he's got mental problems, and he lives with his mother, and he really wants to create his own human centipede. So he starts where he works, hitting people over the head in the garage. He works in a garage at, like, I think an apartment complex. He starts hitting people over the head and taking them to this warehouse. And he's, his plan is to turn them into a centipede. But he does, he's not a doctor. He doesn't know anything about what he's doing. So it has pretty twisted results. 
And you know, if you like the first set Human Centipede, you'll probably like this. Some people didn't like the black and white. I thought the black and white really made it pretty cool. I don't mind watching black and white movies. Some people really dislike it. I don't know. I, I like this, but it is very twisted. It's not the same level as something like, when people say like, the torture porn kind of thing, like Hostel. It's not really the same type of thing. This is more about mental illness and about, so it almost make, is making a, this director is almost making a weird statement about how the first movie that he did could turn somebody to do something like this. And it, it's very interesting when you look at it like that. Because the first movie really didn't show a whole lot when you really think about it. And he said that the next one is going to be, make the second one look like a really good Disney film. And the first film would look like Barney. So we'll, we'll see. Now the next one I got is Harrod and Kumar Christmas, the 3D version. Now I don't know if this is only available at um, Best Buy. A lot of um, the 3D Warner Brothers movies are only exclusive to um, Best Buy. So I don't know if it's everywhere. I will say that the, it's a shame though the 3D version is not the extended cut. So I'm going to have to watch the non-3D one to see the extended. But I saw this in theaters. I liked it. I like the Howard and Kumar movies. They're real silly. Um, it's basically Howard and Kumar kind of lost t touch of each other and really aren't friends anymore. But they end up getting back together to... What were they doing? I forgot what they were doing. They were trying to, f to do something. I, I, I totally forgot what they were doing. But they were doing something. I, I, some reason I sometimes when I watch too many movies I blank and I watch it in theaters and haven't watched it again. But they were doing something and it has something to do with Christmas. I know the Waffle Bot. I remember certain details, but I can't remember every every little thing because I think I saw it when I was tired. Um, the next one is called Fascination, and Gene Rowland put out a whole lot. There's a whole bunch of these Gene Rowland films that just came out. This one looked the most interesting because of the cover, and I was pretty sure it was the same woman on the cover who was in the movie Faceless, which I really liked. A really weird, strange French film. And it was the same woman. She was a lot younger. That was why I wasn't sure when I was watching it. And this is kind of like, um, it's basically this guy. I couldn't figure out what was going on in the beginning. He, like, stole money and then he kidnapped, took this woman, and she got, the woman got away. And he ends up hiding out in the chateau with these two women that he basically, you know, says you're gonna let me stay in here and holds them up with a gun and they all keep saying oh the one they keep basically trying to keep them there they're like oh the one and then they start saying oh you may want to get out of here because something is going to happen at midnight someone is coming to the chateau and I will say the coolest stuff in this music was like the location the look the music you know it wasn't a perfect movie I thought it was kind of cool kind of creepy and I really don't want to ruin it what it was but, you know, because I don't know, I don't want to say too much about it, the whole thing if anyone watches it. This one I just wanted to watch again. I'm probably going to watch this right when I finish this. And I don't know, I always kind of like this movie. I don't really like Jessica Simpson, but I like this movie. Um, and it was Employee of the Month. I always like movies that are like set in like locations like this. I thought Andy Dick was funny in this. And I think, I think Har yeah, Harlan Williams was in this. I don't know, I thought it was kind of funny. It was basically... They're having, like, the new employee, um, Jessica Simpson, at this sort of Sam's Club place, Costco kind of place. Um, they all have this thing in their head that she likes the employees of the month that she'll go out with them. And basically, Dane Cook and Dax Shepard's character are competing to try and win employee of the month so they can sleep with her. It, it was funny. Now, this is one of the ones I got at Blockbuster that was closing. And this one, you know, people are going to be, ooh, I, I don't know, I kind of like it. Now, this one, though, um... The price of this is all over the place. Sometimes on Amazon used, it's $30. Sometimes it's 10 Sometimes it's 8 Sometimes the 8 goes away, and it's 40 It's all over the place for this used. And I, it's lower now, it's, I think, because people are buying these off and they have going out of business blockbusters. And I got this, I think, for like $5. So it's cheaper than anywhere used. And it's Eddie Murphy and Norbert. I do think it's kind of funny that they credit Eddie Murphy twice. I remember when this first came out, people were mad about that. Like, why does he need two credits? It's because he's playing both the characters. But um, it's basically Eddie Murphy. You know, it's kind of like The Clumps. Not as funny. But it's one of those kind of movies you need to watch about ten times to really go, oh, that's kind of kind of funny. And it's basically Eddie Murphy's character grows up in this orphanage. And he has no friends, really. But then he meets Respucia when he's probably... Well, at first he meets this one girl that he really likes. But she ends up getting adopted. And after that he has no friends. Then he meets Respucia when he's like... 
14 or 15, something like that. Then they eventually end up getting married. He's really not very happy in his life. But then the girl that he like really loved, um, you know, that got adopted, comes back to the town. And it causes all kinds of problems for him. And he starts to realize how much he still loves the, the girl, but he's stuck with Respucia, and he really sees too much. He really hates her. And I don't know, it's kind of funny. I don't know, a lot of people really disliked it. I kind of like it. The next one I got, um, I will say this one, I haven't watched this one since it first was in theaters. It's very sad. You know, it's one of those ones you're probably going to cry like a fiend too, especially some of the stuff near the end. You know, so even thinking about it, you're like, ooh, and it's click. Yeah, this is like the period of time when Adam Sandler was doing some really depressing things. Like this, Fifty First Dates. It's by the end of Fifty First Dates, I'm crying like a fiend. Oh my god. Half of that movie, I'm like, oh. Because there's certain movies that are just sad as shit like that. Bicentennial Man. And even though this is so silly, it's just sad. Especially the stuff with Henry Winkler, you know, Adam Sandler with his father in the movie. And um, basically, Adam Sandler has this kind of busy life. And... He's like, oh, why can't I just have a, you know, a universal remote to make my life a little bit easier? So he ends up going to Bed Bath and Beyond and sees a Beyond section. Goes back there, it's Christopher Walken, and he's like, oh, this remote will help you out. So he ends up taking this remote, and he can basically fast forward and pause, but things go wrong with the remote, and it starts fast forwarding, and he starts missing things and things like that. I don't want to ruin everything, but it's a fun movie. I got this. One, this is a harder one to find, superhero movie. I didn't even know this was on Blu-ray. I kind of like this one. It was one of the better spoofs. It was Drake, I think it was Drake Bell. Yeah, I think, yeah. Drake, yeah, Drake Bell. Sarah Paxton, who's really good at the innkeepers, was in this. I don't know, I liked it. I don't I, I don't remember it too well. This is one of those few sets I got the um, triple feature. There's a couple of these out. Um... Now, people are wondering, though, these are the actual discs of the movie. They're not, you know, like, all put onto one disc. So, technically, you know, it's funny. I've, they had seven there for, I think, nineteen ninety nine, but it was, you know, in its own disc. Or they had this for fourteen ninety nine, and it had the same exact disc with the features and everything. But I also never had seen Copycat. I watched that. I thought that was really pretty cool. And, you know, seven's a great movie, so this is definitely one of the good sets to get. This one I got was cheap at Walmart, which I, you know, I'm getting rid of some of the DVDs and switching over to Blu-rays of certain things. Fletch, you know, when he played all the characters and he was the private detective. This is a funny one. This is one I got cheap. Joe Somebody. And I, I think he was like, Tim Allen was getting in a fight with, um, who was the character in this thing? Jim, Jim Belushi and like, something about like they had this kind of like, it's a little bit like Bully, I think. I think not bully the one with um Tom Arnold and stuff. I, I don't remember. I don't remember that very well. Uh, this one I really don't remember the whole plot of this, but I loved it. I remember night train murders. And I, as far as I remember, it was two girls going on this night train, getting sort of harassed and like abused by these men on the train. And it was one of those like '70s movies. Yeah, some of these I, I said I have not watched these. I need to watch them again, but I, I want to show them, but I don't remember them. This one I really surprisingly liked a lot. I don't really like baseball and like sports movies, but this was good. It's called The Scout. And um, it's basically Brendan Fraser. Is this, uh, it starts with Albert Brooks trying to find a baseball player. He finds one he thinks is going to be great because he's a scout for like I think the New York Yankees, something like that. And he thinks he's found this great person. He ends up being a flake and he can't play and all these problems. So then he ends up finding Brendan Fraser out in Mexico. And, you know, he's like... He's, you know, he's one of the best he's ever seen, but Brendan Fraser comes with all kinds of baggage and emotional problems and all these kind of things. And it becomes kind of sad, too. And I don't know. It was, it was a good movie. And the next one I got, and I went to the, v I mean, the DVDs, is um, this one I heard a lot of people talk about, too. It's Project Nim. And I really thought this was pretty good. It's basically about in the 70s they had a program where they were trying to teach chimpanzees to sign seeing if they could communicate with them. So it start, you know, the, starts with them adopting them. And the way they made it, this documentary was pretty cool. They, they would reshoot certain sequences. Then they would, um, you know, interview the people now and then use old footage. The way they put it together was very a little different than other documentaries, especially with their reenactments of little segments that would cut into things. I, I liked it. But it shows basically Nim's life and all the people that he's been with 
throughout the years and how he was getting taught by one person, taken away, taught, taken, taken to someone, someone else, and then when he would go back, you know, like when life got really difficult for the foreman, all kind. It was very depressing though, very sad, and you know, it goes through his life and everybody who was touched by him. I don't know. It's definitely worth watching. The next one I got is season two of Rocco, and I'm glad they you know did a new cover for it because the, the other one was just using the same artwork on it, and I I always liked Rocco. The next one, and I'm glad they finally have started putting these out. They put out the season one. It's been a long time since the second you know since any things come out, and finally they put out Family Matters season two. And I know some people don't love this show. I've always loved this. This was always one of the ones that I was always waiting, like, when is this going to come out? Now the other ones that I'm waiting for them to finally start putting out at some point is like Fantasy Island, which I love that show. But who knows if they're ever going to put out the other seasons. This is definitely, if you love Family Matters, get this, you know, buy it, and hopefully they'll keep putting out the seasons. You know, because there's still a couple, quite a few more. I think there's like six more or something. So hopefully they're going to put them all out. And uh, the next one I got, and I need to watch both of these, is um, the Drive-In Collection. This is out of print. It's Fade to Black and Hell Knight. Both of these I want to watch. Because I got, I was traded some stuff in Amoeba. and had a bunch of credits, so I used that for a couple of these. The next one is Volume 2 of Storage Wars. I love this show. You know, this is one of the few ones that I would buy, this show. Hopefully it continues for a long time. But, you know, they have that other one, Storage Wars Texas. It's okay. I only, li I only like the mole character. That's it. And this one, I think, Barry's the best character. So hopefully he keeps doing it. But I, I don't know. I really like this. It's basically people bidding on storage lockers and then buying the stuff in it. And sometimes they find good stuff. Sometimes they find crap. Then seeing what they can sell it for. And, you know, when you explain it to people, a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't sound very good. But then they watch it. And most of the time, they're like, I like that. You know, it's just the way it's put together and the people, I like this. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching, for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.